Uh, Wilson Alexander from The Advocate every week here. We talk to him, covers LSU. Uh, Wilson, new practice schedule put out earlier this week. Tigers on the field today and tomorrow. Uh, open access Saturday. Uh, it's been very limited on what you've seen up to this point. Have you been able to take anything substantial away from what you've seen? Nope, not uh, really. Uh, because we've only had you know, 20 minutes of open practice. And LSU to this point has only practiced three times, I believe. Uh, today is, you know, they, Brian Kelly does this sort of uh, soft launch almost to spring practice every year because he always starts it right before spring break. So they practice a little bit, then they go on spring break for a week, and then uh, they get back into it. And so spring practice will actually really start to ramp up here kind of this week and then, uh, you know, from now until the spring game in April 13th. So the next three weeks will be, Actually, I think pretty more revealing with spring practice. Uh, we'll actually start to learn more about the team, get more access, you know, have press conferences with Joe Sloan, Blake Baker, uh, talk to players tomorrow and, and such things like that. And then have actually a fully open practice, um, I think, every Saturday other than uh, the Saturday before Easter uh, between now and the spring game. So, you know, but he, do, he does that. I think he explained last year. It's almost like a loophole and some NCAA rules in order to kind of get more time with the team and, uh but it also create means that the first the spring practice is always a little bit slow to ramp up, but then it really picks up speed uh, here through the end. Uh, Wilson, I know that we've talked about this so many times, and we beat a dead horse on this, but uh, Brad Davis does it again. Tyler Miller, uh, the number one interior offensive lineman in the country, uh, the number one offensive lineman in the state of Mississippi, pledged his commitment to the Tigers last weekend. Uh, throw another one into his room. Uh, what else can you say about what Davis has done? It feels like we talk about him every single yes, week. Does. I mean, and for good reason, because he is recruiting extremely well, and he's cultivating an offensive line that should be a strength uh, for years to come now. I mean, you look at, obviously, the front, you know, sort of those four returning starters, gives you a lot of confidence, but DJ Chester sliding into the mix seems like that uh, could be, anyway, maybe seamless. All these are freshmen that have, uh, you know, have come in now. You know, they, you know, of course, next year when they, they lose, most likely, you know, Will Campbell and Emory Jones and Miles Frazier and Garrett Dellinger, like they'll have to be work to do. But at this point, you know, he's built up that room to where, you know, those guys can come in here and, uh, you know, develop and, and kind of wait and then be ready when they go in instead of throwing Will Campbell and Emory Jones right onto the field as true freshmen, even though they acquitted themselves quite well. You know, you, it seems like LC might not have to do that really uh, moving forward. And, and Tom Miller is another piece of that. I mean, they've already been recruiting well in this 2025 offensive line. And they've added, you look at the numbers, it's like they've added four or five, even like I think in this last class, sorry, six mm -hmm. um, offensive linemen every year. I mean, they, they're adding, it's not like it's, uh, there hasn't really been like a year that looks really sparse in terms of recruiting the offensive line over the last few years. And, um, you know, Brad Davis has certainly uh, earned the praise that he has gotten to this point. Um, he's done a great job and he continues to do so on the recruiting trail um, with Tyler Miller being the latest example. Uh, yeah, the depth that he has been able to build in such the short time. I mean, it feels like the offensive line is stable now for at least three to five years. I mean, you lose a guy like Zalance Hurd, and I, I never want to sell it like LSU's a you know a better team without him. But I mean, the the fact that they can absorb this like they have just is really the testament to him. Um, all right, so defensively is the, is the story here, Wilson. What, what do you get out of spring with, with a defense that has to replace so much? I mean, is it just about, like, technique and, and, and alignment here? Or is it – I mean, it's day one stuff, right? It is. It's the fundamental stuff. It's tackling and pursuit angles and uh, run fits and getting uh, those things worked out. You know, obviously, LSU will start to install – what Blake Baker wants schematically. Um, but really here in the spring, it isn't as so much about those sort of nitty gritty um, X's and O's things as it is just basic football. And that's kind of what this defense needed to revert back to anyway. You know, they needed to be able to get that stuff right before you could really start to lay on the technical things. Um, you know, obviously LSU is, you know, capable of doing that, but like they, they got to get back to, the, to square one uh, a lot of ways with this defense. And there are a few, you know, returning players, certainly when you look at like Harold Perkins and uh, Greg Penn and, Major Burns and some of those guys in the secondary. But obviously, when you come off of last year's defense, uh, it doesn't necessarily um, make too much of a difference if you're returning everybody uh, mm -hmm. necessarily. And then obviously, LSU lost players at some key spots, especially defensive tackle. But like you're also bringing back Savion Jones and Paris Shand and uh, Braden Swinson. And so, you know, there is a few number of returning players on this defense, but they've got to kind of learn how to work cohesively again 
um, and start with those fundamentals. Uh, that's really going to be the pair. That's going to be paramount here this spring, so that when they go into preseason camp, they're not as focused on those sorts of things and can start laying down the schematics of the defense. Uh, you know, here in year one under Blake Baker. Uh, another name that feels like he's on the doorstep and, and it is his time uh, is Chris Hilton. Uh, what are the expectations for Hilton and, and what are the projections for Hilton going into next season? Well, it's going to be fascinating. I mean, the expectations and projections are sort of like, okay, are you ready to take the next step? Or can you be a big part of this receiver rotation? Because he finally last year was healthy uh, for most of the season. Um, and, you know, that for the first time in his career, you know, didn't really miss a significant portion of games. Um, and with that, he was able to probably be, I guess you would maybe say wide receiver four, um, but that was, he was still really far off from those top three guys in terms of, uh, you know, catches and, and yards and touchdowns. And so, but now because, you know, you got some guys leave, you know, and now Chris is going into this will be his fourth season on campus. It's our, the, the production expectation is just, can you take that next step? Can you be a, a bigger part of this receiver rotation? Uh, because LSU, like we know, is, of course, you know, replacing the top two guys, but it brings in, you know, Xavier Thomas and CJ Daniels and Brian Kelly talked about them, I guess, about two weeks ago now as, you know, being some people who are really going to be in the mix for playing time and, and, and possibly starting. And so Chris is going to have to be able to show that he deserves that playing time as well. Um, continue to use his speed down the field, but also really just to further develop as a, the full route tree, you know, mm -hmm. not just be sort of like a one trick pony because that's, what's going to get him onto the field is by being able to do a lot more than just stretch it vertically. Yeah. And so as long as he can do that, um, he'll be able to continue to, you know, carve out a, a role in this offense. Um, he certainly got, you know, the tools we've seen the, in the past um, in, in bits and spurts, um, but now he's really got to build it all together and become more of a complete wide receiver in order to be able to get on the field more. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that we ask you about it every week, but these new faces, these early enrollees, uh, who will you be pinpointing when you get a chance to go out there on Wednesday and Saturday of just kind of making sure that you put eyeballs on? Yeah, Gabe Relaford uh, yeah. certainly comes to mind. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see kind of what he can do of anything as a freshman. Um, all of a sudden, the, the names are escaping me out here. But uh, Deshaun McBride, yes. uh, Joel Rogers there in the secondary in particular. You know, a lot of the guys who are on defense, can any, you know, because we know what this defense is doing after year one, it's can any of these guys kind of come in and make a difference on defense right away? Um, I don't think it, you know, an inside linebacker, uh, LSU is pretty set there in terms of, you know, Greg Penn and Harold Perkins and the Weeks brothers. So you're probably not looking at, uh, too many of those guys as being able to make, you know, day one impacts. Um, but those other ones, that those positions of possibly uh, concern, uh, certainly have more of a chance to get on the field. And so McBride and, and I think Relaford would probably be my top two. And then Cohen Eccles as well on the offensive side and some of those other early and early offensive linemen. Can they be on the two deep? You know, LSU, as great as the, that first team offensive line is, as we know, you got to be able to have some depth ready. Uh, just in case of the worst scenario happens. And so if any of those guys, especially Eccles, who we saw as the second team center a couple weeks ago, hmm. are ready, those kinds of would be some of the ones to keep an eye on. Uh, good stuff as always, Wilson. Make sure and check him out on social media, WH Alexander. There will be some busy stuff coming up with LSU on the field today. Access tomorrow, open access Saturday. Uh, so uh, a lot of content for Wilson.